Hello, welcome back. This talk is about abstractions related to dependencies between instructions or groups of instructions that are provided by Noel. This talk is for my class advanced topics in compilers that I teach at Northwestern University. I've decided to open these talks to everyone with the hope they will be useful for anyone interested in doing compiler research while taking advantage of our Noel framework, which is open source. So this talk is structured in three parts. First, I'm gonna uh, describe the program dependence graph very quickly. This is an abstraction available in literature since 1987. And we implemented that in Noel and we provide that abstraction uh, to the user of Noel. Then I'm gonna describe another abstraction called the SEC DAG, which is computed from the PDG or a subset of the PDG. And then I'm gonna jump into the, describing the semantics of the, the concept of a dependence between two instructions or groups of instructions. So the PDG is provided by Noel and uh, to access it at, uh, for the, the, at the granularity of single instructions, in other words, a dependence is a binary relation between two instructions, then you can do it by uh, from the Noel object, which you can uh, obtain using uh, the code that you uh, um, I have in, in my previous talk, uh, that from that object, there is an API, it's called get program dependence graph, and what it, it, it returns is the a dependence graph of the entire program. Uh, a dependence is either between two instructions or between an instruction and a function parameter. So the dependencies in the PDG provided by Noel are clustered by function. Uh, what this means is that let's assume that we have two functions, f1 and f2, and let's assume that the store uh, in, in, uh, in f1 uh, access the same memory location of the load in f2, then you have a dependence from the store that write the data to the load that reads the data uh, generated by the store. And, but this dependence is not captured in this way, but uh, is captured by having a dependence from the store to the call to F2. That's what we mean as clustering dependencies by functions. And this is a, um, uh, this decision is directly implied by the API of LS analysis that LLVM provide. Okay. Uh, in Noel, you can also um, uh, compute the function dependence graph. This is the dependence graph between instructions of a single function. In order to do that, you uh, from Noel, you have to access a new abstraction called the functions manager, which is the manager that knows uh, a lot about all functions that compose the program. So you take the functions manager and then from this, you can ask to uh, access the, the entry point of the execution of the program, so the main function in C and C++. Um, and then now, let's say you have a, you, somehow you get a function that you want to compute the function dependence graph, in this slide is the main function. And then you, you use Noel to compute the dependence graph only of that function, not everything else. So this, of course, is much faster, consume less memory, and perhaps this is the only thing you care about because maybe this is the hottest function of the program and that's the only thing you want to optimize. So in this case, uh, the object return is, the, is a different object in C++ object, but is, uh, is, the is, uh, uh, is an instance of the same C++ class the, uh, of the object PDG returned by the previous API. In other words, we have a single C++ class that capture that we, we use to generate both the program dependence graph and the function dependence graph. Okay, so independently whether the, you have the PDG or the FDG, uh, right, because they are both instances of the same C++ class, you, you, access the sa you can access the same API. So let's look at this, an example of this API. Uh, this is just to give you an example of what you can do. Of course, if you want to understand the full set of APIs you have access to, please refer to the sources. Okay, let's assume that you want to iterate over dependencies for whatever reason. Okay. So there, you have many ways of doing that. Uh, one way is uh, I have you have an instruction and you want to iterate over the um, uh, incoming dependencies uh, or incoming edges in the dependence graph that lead to the instruction you pass as input. Okay. 
So in this, in this case, we want to iterate over all dependencies between another instruction and instruction ends. So this is the API. Uh, you pass the instruction you want to iterate over, or you want to iterate over the, over the incoming edges of this instruction. And then you specify filters. Uh, filters are um, uh, uh, optional, uh, and you can use them to specify whether you want to iterate over all possible dependencies uh, or a subset. For example, the first one is a boolean, true and false. And if you uh, set it to true, it means you want to iterate also over control dependencies, not just data dependencies. Uh, the second uh, is uh, the second filter is to turn on or off uh, memory dependencies, so dependencies that exist between two instructions because they may access the same memory location. And finally, the uh, the last filter is to include uh, or not uh, variable dependencies. Those are dependencies between two instructions that exist because they access the same variable. So the defuse chain in LRVM, basically. OK, and then the last argument is the uh, lambda function that you pass to, uh, that will be applied at every dependence that uh, uh, found by the framework. Okay. So this is an example of lambda function you can write in C++. So the, the signature is, uh, the, f the first parameter is the source of the dependence that is uh, we are it, uh, that is in uh, the current iteration, so the current dependence we are iterating over, and and then uh, uh, the second parameter is the dependence itself, which is an instance of the class DGEdge, because we in um, the, the concept of dependence in Noel is a very is a rich abstraction that has a lot of properties, a lot of API you can access that give you knowledge semantics about that dependence okay and this is the object that uh, these uh, lambda function have to return a boolean and uh, it answers the question do you want to stop iterating or do you want to keep iterating over the remaining dependencies that you ask for okay uh, now inside this lambda function you have the dependence object which means you can now query it to understand this the nature of this dependence. You can check if this dependence is a control dependence, like in the slide, or if it is a data dependence. And if it is a data dependence, whether it's a read after write, write after read, write after write, all of these concepts are uh, taught in conventional compiler classes, so I'm, I'm not describing them here. However, if you don't know them, don't worry. Uh, just go to my website or, or a website of another compiler class, uh, and, and the information is there. In particular, I teach these concepts in my other class, uh, 323, uh, Code Analysis and Transformation. Okay. Also, if the dependence is a memory dependence, so it's a dependence between two instructions because they might access the same memory location, uh, now you can also query the dependence to understand whether this is a may or must dependence. Must dependence means they must access the same location may dependence means they may, so we cannot prove that they don't access the same location, therefore we have to assume conservatively that they may access the same memory location. Okay. So in other words, the strong information here is mass dependence and the lack of a dependence. So if you don't, if the most conservative answer is a may dependence. This is very similar to alias analysis and may alias is the lack of knowledge. It means you cannot prove the alias exists and you cannot even prove that it doesn't exist. Okay. Similarly, this translates to the concept of dependence. Uh, you can also iterate over uh, outgoing edges. The API is very similar. And, and here, the only difference is that the first parameter is now the destination of the dependence. And, and, and the, the dependence properties is the same. Uh, you also have another way to iterate over dependencies. Um, you can, from the dependence graph, either function dependence graph or program dependence graph, you can iterate, you can uh, um, ask the abstraction to return the set of dependencies that exist between two instructions. Uh, in this case, is uh, we ask, uh, uh, give me this full set of dependencies between these two instructions. And now you have as a return uh, the same dependence object we saw in the previous slide. And now you can query it in the same way. 
Uh, is this a control dependence? Yes or no? Is this a memory dependence? Etc. Cetera, Etc. Cetera. Uh, therefore, you can use exactly the same code. Okay. So uh, Nuant provides the PDG, the FDG, but it also provides a loop dependence graph. This is the, uh, dependency, the set of dependencies between instructions of a given loop. Now, when you do have a loop dependence graph, now the dependencies become richer in information because now the dependencies have also an extra property, which is about whether the dependencies are loop carried or not. Again, the concept of loop carry dependence is taught in typical compiler classes. I also teach it in uh, my class 323. Uh, it what basically means is that the source and the destination of the dependence may be uh, on different iterations. Uh, or the dependence exists because it carry over across iterations. That's a different way of saying. I have an entire talk and deck of slides just on loops and abstractions that are loop centric, a loop specific. Um, there I'm going to go in more detail about the LDG. Um, but, uh, but yeah. So all dependence graphs are instances of the same class, which is the PDG class. And uh, um, now because the loops are very important, uh, then we have a, an abstraction that describe a single loop, which we call loop dependence info, which includes the LDG. But again, this is, I'm going to go in more depth on this in a separate talk. So at a high level, loop DG includes the LDG, the SEC DAG, which I'm going to talk about in a second, and much more. Okay, so uh, just to refresh our memory about memory less analysis, um, uh, I teach this in 3.23. So this is just a very, very quick summary. Um, uh, you want to know whether two pointers may alias or, or, or cannot alias or must alias because this information will enable or disable optimizations like parallelization, vectorization, code scheduling. And so for example, in this case, if I want to, um, uh, if I want to swap i and j, the instructions i and j, independently whether they are from, a, let's say, a C type of language like on the left or a Java type of language like on the, on the right, the problem is still the same. I can swap them only if I know on the left that P and Q cannot alias, or if I, uh, if I know that object one and object two on the right um, are different objects. This goes down to the fundamentally the same problem. Do these two pointers slash references alias? Okay. This information is what we use to compute the dependence graph. And because of the, uh, there are many different ways of there are many different algorithms that provide uh, this knowledge uh, because there is a very rich trade-off between computation time, memory consumption, and uh, quality of the accur or accuracy of the results. Then uh, in Noel, we rely on a very rich set of alias analysis that we use to compute a dependence graph, either the PDG, the FDG, or the LDG. We currently rely on a roughly 40 memory alias analysis that work collaboratively. This one comes uh, from three different frameworks. Uh, the SCAF framework that we, uh, uh, we, we designed and implemented uh, 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 together with Princeton. Uh, so Thierry was the uh, leading author there. Um, SVF that we, we didn't implement, SVF, we, we, we took it uh, um, from University of Sydney. Uh, and, and then we used a subset of alias analysis of LLVM because we found a few bugs in, in, in some of them, so we cannot rely on, on all of them. Um, now, so, so Noel includes also an extra alias analysis um, uh, because there are a very few corner cases that are not captured by any alias analysis in these three um, frameworks. Uh, so, but, but the mindset we are using in, in Noel is that LS analysis is the input of Noel, is uh, they are outside Noel. We rely on them to compute abstractions like dependence graph abstractions, but we don't want to include them in Noel. So therefore, even, even if Noel, as of now, it does include an LS analysis, the goal is to, as soon as these corner cases are handled by any of these three frameworks, then we're going to remove it from Noel. Okay. 
Now I'm going to describe the uh, new abstraction called SCC DAG. So Noel provide uh, a hierarchical representation of dependencies uh, with the name of a strongly connected component direct acyclic graph. So from the from a dependence graph, let's say a program dependence graph, a function dependence graph, a loop dependence graph, either of them, any of them. So if you have a graph, then uh, you can ask Noel, I have this graph, compute the SCC DAC from it. So um, what that means is that you take the graph and Noel identify automatically the strongly connected components in this graph. Strongly connected component, if you don't know what it is, don't worry. It's a, it, it's a concept we borrow from the graph theory, like the compilers borrow, the compiler community borrow from the graph theory. And we, we, um, uh, we use it here. In this case, this, uh, we have two SCCs, one that is ABC, another one is D. And, and then when we identify them, and, and if you don't know sorry, what a strongly connected component is, I teach that concept in my class 323. So as you can see, my advanced topics in compiler really heavily rely on my prior classes. So please check out those material first. Okay, so we identify the SCC. Then what Noel does is uh, it collapses them in, into a single node. Now the resulting graph is a cyclic by construction and nodes are either SECs or are single instructions. Now the representation that Noel provides is hierarchical, both at the node level and at the edge level. So at the node level, if you have a node that is an SEC, you can inspect it inside. It's a, there is a hierarchy there. You can go inside, zoom in, and, so, and see the instructions that compose the SEC and its inter internal dependencies that have created the SEC. You can also do a, the same zoom in um, process at, at a single edge that connect uh, one SEC into another SEC. So for example, in this case, we can take this edge that connect these two SECs, and if we zoom in inside this edge, we have a sub edge and in the sub edge connects the specific instruction or instructions that the source of this um, edge between the SECs um, uh, connect with the destination that is in the SEC one. Okay? So in other words, if you want to know why SEC zero and SEC one are connected, then uh, you can look at the sub edges of these uh, edge here, and then you can look at the specific instructions that depend on each other, but they belong to different SEC, and therefore have created this connection at a higher level, at the SEC level. This is a much better way of saying it. <laughs> okay, um, now how do you do that in Noel? Uh, it's quite simple. You have whatever dependence graph you have, and you in, uh, create a new uh, an instance of the class SEC DAG, and you pass as a constructor that dependence graph, and the job is done. Okay, um, now let's jump into the semantics of dependencies. So dependencies are either control or data dependencies, and data dependencies are either via memory or via uh, variable, as I mentioned before, and as also uh, explained in, in uh, almost every compiler class. So as a quick reminder uh, for control dependencies, control dependencies are computed, is, um, it's, a prop, it's a binary relation between basic blocks that we break it down into single instructions. And it's a binary relation that only depends on the topology of, of, of the control for graph. So it doesn't, it doesn't matter the, how data are computed. Uh, the only thing that matters is the shape of the CFG. So this uh, uh, binary relation is computed using the post dominators. Um, this is uh, computed with a control flow analysis. Again, all these concepts are taught in the class 323. This is just a fresh reminder. So uh, a post dominator means that it's a binary relation between basic blocks and node D post dominates node N in a graph if every path from N to the exit node, so to where you leave the function, uh, has to go through D. So uh, so therefore, um, after you 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 uh, uh, you execute n, you have to execute d before leaving the function. Okay. Now this information or this uh, relation uh, is used to compute the other relation control dependencies, which is then captured by the dependence graph that Noel provide. Uh, we chose to use these. Uh, um, definition of control dependencies. There are several in literature. 
um, this is the one that is uh, uh, predominantly adopted by compilers, uh, but th this is not the only one. But this is the one we chose, and is the common uh, choice in the community by the community. Uh, so, so a node Y control depends on another node X. If and only if there is a path from X to Y such that every node in the path other than X is post-dominated by Y, and X is not strictly post-dominated by Y. So. What, so this um, mouthful definition means the following. It captured the following property. The, uh, like you can see it here from the, uh, from, from, from the right uh, part of the slide that described the, uh, that show the code. Um, so here we want to capture the fact that the, whether you're gonna execute C or not depends or is controlled by the execution of B. So if the condition computed in B is true, you execute C. Otherwise, you don't. Okay? And notice that they there is no data dependence between B and C, the, right? N neither variable or memory. So the data dependence doesn't capture this um, this relation between B and C. Control dependencies does, uh, or control dependencies do. And this is captured by this definition here. Okay, uh, data dependencies in in uh, um, in Noel, uh, we adopt a specific semantics, uh, which is this: uh, a variable dependence is a diffuse chain in NLVM. Uh, so literally, it is nothing more, uh, nothing less than that. In, uh, so, uh, and we have the concept of this variable dependence by wrapping the diffuse chain in NLVM of variables uh, to have a, a same abstraction that you can use to iterate over all type of dependencies uh, without having to switch to another abstraction, the diffuse chain. Okay. That's the, it's only for convenience that we introduced it. The memory dependence instead uh, um, is, is more elaborate. So the memory dependence in, in Noel uh, from instruction I1 to instruction I2 um, means the following, or in other words, there is a dependence, memory dependence between I1 and I2 if and only if. The footprint, uh, footprint means the, the memory touched by. So the footprint of operation I1 may alias the footprint of uh, I2. In other words, they may access the same memory location. At least one of the two instructions writes to memory. And there is a feasible path in the control for graph of execution P from I1 to I2, such that there is no operation in that path that overwrite that uh, uh, common memory footprint. In other words, there is at least one possibility that after executing I1, you are going to execute I2, and that memory location that they both access is not overwritten. Okay? When that is true, then we have a memory dependence from I1 to I2. Oh, let me say in a different way. When we cannot disprove that this cannot happen, then we have that dependence. Okay, um, so this is the meaning of memory dependence in Noel. Again, uh, this is not certain, because, uh, and this, this definition is, uh, we, we, um, uh, it, we didn't create it, we just used it from, that was described in literature, and the paper is in the bottom of the previous slide. Um, so I just wanted to say a few words about the memory model, which relates to the concept of alias analysis, which we use, or, to aliasing that we use to compute dependencies in one. Okay, so in we use the same memory model that LVM IR has, which is the following. Uh, I, I think it, it's it's much easier and to, to understand with an example. Let's imagine that we have two objects or two pointers that of objects of consecutive sequence of memory locations are located with an allocator, let's say malloc. So we have we invoke malloc twice. We have the pointer, two pointers, so two different objects guaranteed to be different, right? Because we invoke um, uh, malloc uh, twice. Um, now, let's assume that we take we compute a pointer p to be uh, uh, starting from the first pointer, my object zero, and we add four. Okay? Now the size of um, my object zero is four, which means when you add four to the pointer, now you you are one byte off from the limit of the memory object, okay? Uh, 
so you, you are accessing garbage, basically. You are accessing memory that you didn't allocate. But the question can be, or we can pose the question, can P alias my object one? The answer to the question depends on the memory model chosen by a given language, in particular the LLVMIR, that's the one we, we are interested in this, in this talk. So the memory model of LLVM answer it in the following way, it answers to say no. Even if there is a chance that you allocate the second object and it just happened to be uh, allocated in the memory space exactly after my object zero. Therefore, P will be, will point exactly to the beginning of my object, of the second memory object. In other words, the pointer P will be exactly the same as the pointer my object one. The memory model says that still these two pointers don't alias because the assumption is if you start from a pointer and you add an arbitrary offset, you will never go to a different object. Okay? But because if you do, it's undefined behavior and therefore compilers do whatever we want. And in this case, we decide they don't alias. Okay? And undefined behavior means it's a bug. Okay? It's just not captured or, or it is gonna be a silent bug. If you're, if, you're, if you're lucky, you get a sec fault. If you're not lucky, it's gonna be a silent bug. Okay, with this, I conclude the talk. I hope I was clear enough to make you understand um, the abstractions that we provide in Noel, and um, uh, good luck.